like every other society, we have seating in the Greek world and will take on a number of different forms. The most common forms are the ones I'm going to cover here, starting with the klismos chair. Now this chair we know primarily from vase paintings, frescoes, sculpture, and other forms, but this is a great recreation of one. The key features here are that barrel back, that round, deep rounded back that you can imagine being very comfortable. A seat which is usually woven, and they're weaving it not because of cost so much, although cost is a factor because the Greeks don't have a lot of really good straight timber. They have things like olive trees and acacia, not really great furniture wood. But those legs that are curved, that tends to stand out and it's highly stylized. This is a style that they probably didn't come up with themselves. In fact, it probably came down to them from previous Bronze Age peoples, such as the Mycenaeans, the Minoans, or the Cycladic peoples. They also have stools, and this would have been far more common. So you can imagine in your average working class home, you might not have a chair, or maybe there's one or two good chairs, and the rest of everything else is going to be stools because they're cheap, they use less material, they're easier to handle. Now, the first form that we're looking at is the defros, and this is a really common standard four-legged stool. Again, woven in the center primarily for padding but also because of material issues. Now, in this case, we see one with four freestanding legs, but more commonly, we would probably have seen stringers running along or cross stringers running diagonally underneath to strengthen it. Because, of course, over time, these legs are going to try and bend out, and eventually they will break. That's the whole purpose of the stringers under any four-legged object. They also have a form of folding stool. Now, we know that there's folded and were used for that purpose. For example, if I'm entertaining, I might have a few extra and I pull them out for my guests. But these folding stools would have been quite common and they're using them once again, just like the Egyptians. We have the Egyptian animal foot, which we saw before. We see the use of fabrics and leathers across as the surface. Of course, you can't put a wooden surface there. It wouldn't make a lot of sense as a folding piece of furniture. It's also a very simple piece of furniture. I only need a few pieces of wood. I need four for the legs and two for the crossbars, as well as a little bit of fabric. This is something that would be easily manufactured and probably mass manufactured in ancient Greece. You would have a shop set up that would only sell, for example, folding stools. And we see these used a lot in the working classes. So here we see a group of artisans working on, in this case, either a dress or a sculpture. And I'm going to bet a sculpture from the bits and bobs around, but it could well be a dress as well. And you'll notice the craftsmen are sitting on those four-legged stools, non-folding stools. Of course, it makes sense that they wouldn't use a folding stool because you're going to be sitting there for eight hours it's going to take a lot of time, so do I really want something that's going to be a little bit weaker than your typical four-legged wooden stool? But it also gives us an idea of class. Now, we don't see a klismos chair or even a throne-type chair with arms in this craftsman's workshop because, of course, they're craftsmen, they're artisans. They would be lower middle or middle class, and so it wouldn't make a lot of sense to have expensive furniture. Now, we also have the Greek Klein, which doubles as a banqueting couch and bed. And here we're actually not looking at a Greek example. This is an Etruscan example. The Etruscans are heavily influenced by the Greeks, but gives you an idea of the form of this banqueting couch of the Klein. So you would typically have a couple of people on the Klein, usually uh, spouses or lovers. You would have one side which is raised. And the whole thing would have been raised up on very tall legs, and we'll get to that in a minute. Now, you wouldn't always have a spouse in the Greek world. Of course, you would probably have a lover or something like that. Your spouse is off in the house, hidden away, 
where they can give birth and continue the family name. And I don't mean that to sound horrible, but that is the Greek world. That is the Athenians that we're dealing with, whereas here the Etruscans tend to be a little more monogamous and romantic. Now here again we see another scene. This is a banquet going on. The nude figure is a servant. The other two are people on this banqueting couch. And they're again enjoying a meal. Now in that reclined position it would be very comfortable but you have to question sort of how would it be for digestion. Keep in mind though these banquets and festivals take on a different form than what we have today. If you go home and have dinner, or you have dinner in your place, it takes, what, 30 minutes? Everyone sits down, they eat their food, they leave. That's it. There's a little bit of conversation. In the ancient Mediterranean, these meals would have taken two to three hours. And so comfort over that period of time is going to be more important. You probably don't want to sit at your dining room table for two to three hours. You're not going to be comfortable. People will start tipping back in their chairs. They'll fall over. It's going to be a big mess. Someone will step on the cat. And why you have a cat, I, I don't know. Now, the dining area would be laid out like this. These banqueting couches would be laid out along the walls. There would be small tables at each couch, at each of the uh, clients. And then you would have servants walking around with wine served from large pitchers. Uh, you would have the individual tables with food brought to them. And you would have multiple courses over that two to three hours. And when we look at it, these beds or clines were very, very tall. Uh, to give you an idea, this is probably roughly four feet, three and a half feet off the ground. Uh, so it's about the height of your dining room table. And then the table itself would actually slide underneath it so that you have that storage space. The intention was also that when you finished eating, you could just fall asleep on the very same banquet couch. And they do double is beds in that form. Now much like the Egyptians in terms of construction we would have a wooden frame but then the center of it would probably be woven just like we saw with the Egyptian beds. Ornamentation was based entirely on your class and the poor probably wouldn't even have a klein. They would sit on the floor and eat around uh, some kind of textile that would have the food on it and then you would squat around it and eat. <laughs> 